Welcome to another video in the SOLIDWORKS Formula SAE tutorial series. In this video, I'll be going over several tips and tricks that didn't quite fit in with other videos but I still think are useful for Formula SAE. The first tip will be how to change standard views and rotate them. Second will be using the description property in both your parts and your drawings. And last, I'll be talking about how to use the pack and go feature. The first tip I'd like to go over is how to reorient the standard views in SOLIDWORKS. This is a common issue that arises when using somebody else's models. I'm sure everybody's opened a part just like this and gone up to view orientation and tried to set, for example, isometric view and found out that the planes or standard views are completely off. Looking at an isometric view, we would want to look at the front of the steering wheel, but instead we're forced to look at the back and it's sideways and upside down, and this is really not what we want to see. The good thing is that SOLIDWORKS does provide us a way to reorient the standard views and fix this. The first thing I'm going to do is reorient the model to one of the standard views that I want to use. If I bring up the left side view, I can actually see that this is really what I want to be, the front view, and it's also rotated. To rotate this view to the proper orientation, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and use the arrows on my keyboard in order to rotate the model. Now I finally have the steering wheel where I want it, looking directly at the front, which should be the front view, even though currently SOLIDWORKS thinks this is a rotated left-hand view. Next, I'm going to press the space bar on my keyboard. This brings up the orientation pop-up. Since I want this to be my new front view, from the menu I'm going to select front view. And then the second button over is update standard views. I'm going to click this and confirm with SOLIDWORKS. And now this should reorient everything based off of this being the new front view. You should also know if you ever need to return to the old views or go back, you can just click this button here that is called Reset Standard Views. Now if I reorient the model to isometric view, we can see that we get something reasonable out of the model instead of something backwards and turned around like we were before. It should be noted though that this does not change the orientation of the coordinate system, it only changes the orientation of the views in SOLIDWORKS. The next tip I'll show you is how to set the description field when you're saving your part. This can be a huge help, especially if you have a bunch of different people working on models and organizing things and making sure that everything's in a proper place in SOLIDWORKS. To start, I've just created a simple bracket and I'm going to go and save the model. Up pops the Save As dialog box, or if this is the first time you've used the model, it'll just be a Save dialog box. I can type in the file name and then I can save as a type. And then right below here, there's actually a thing that says description, and I can add a value. Here is where I want to put in a description of what the part actually is. Versus up here, I can put something else like a part number or a drawing number, and we'll see how this plays in later. And then once I'm done, just click Save. Now when I open up the folder that the part is contained in, in Windows Explorer, I can mouse over the model and actually will pop up with the information about it and that description field will be located there. You can imagine this would be very helpful if you have a huge folder full of nothing but part numbers and you want to mouse over something quickly to see what's contained actually in that part file. Here I can see that 2091-57 is actually a bracket. You can be very specific with these part descriptions and even say maybe what the material is that you're using or where it's sourced from, things like that. A second advantage of using the description field is that it can come in handy when I'm creating drawings. If I create a new drawing using this part, you can see that the title block has already been filled in using some of the information I provided such as file name for drawing number and description as the title section. That's probably about the simplest way you can use the description field, but if you're feeling adventurous there's a lot more you can do using custom properties for parts. If you go to the File tab and scroll down to Properties, it'll pull up this field where you can actually enter your own custom properties based on material properties or properties of the part. If I go to Property Name, I can put in Part Number, Revision, Material, Weight, and some of these SOLIDWORKS can fill in automatically, such as adding the material. And then if I specify the material over here in the left-hand side of the window, it will evaluate over here and be added to any of my drawings. The last tip I'd like to mention is the SOLIDWORKS pack and go feature. For this example I've opened up a wheel assembly and say I want to give it to somebody else to work on 
or I'd like to give it to somebody else on another team where it doesn't affect exactly what I'm doing. The tempting thing to do is to go to file and use either save or save as and try to save each individual part or the whole assembly and this is the wrong way to do it. You might end up breaking a lot of references and messing up some of your own assemblies and parts in the process. The proper way to do this is to scroll down a little farther and use the line that says pack and go. Pack and go brings up a dialog box where I can actually select all of the different parts contained in the assembly and what I want to include and what I don't want to include and we will pack them all together in a zip file and then I can just give that to somebody to use. This ensures that all the references remain intact and that I'm also not messing up any of my own models or files. That's it for the tips and tricks video. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, send me an email at sfalkner at solidworks.com.